You can call me Reasons Christ, better yet, Reason Pico. Maybe Reas, honey, cause I do it for the people. All these mediocre motherfuckers, we ain't equal. God body filling myself like an e pill. Call me Reasons Christ, better yet. It's your boy Phil from the African Hip Hop Blog, and I'm here with Reason, aka Reasons Christ. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. God body, what's up, bro? How you feel? I'm good, man. I'm good. Good I'm to good. see you. Good yeah. to see you. Yeah, we caught you at a good time, huh? You caught me at a really good time. There's a lot happening right now. A lot is happening right so, now. So, what, what's up with all this brouhaha on social media, man? Oh, man. People are upset, man. <laughs> Don't mess with white people Jesus, bro. Don't people. mess with white Jesus. Oh, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe you said that. I can't believe you said that. <laughs> uh, but it seems, yeah, that's the, that's, the, that's the moral of the story. Don't mess with white Jesus. I don't know, man. Um... Yeah, we put out this image um, and this um, this thing that I call a metaphor um, of a, of like a little piece of this whole freestyle um, that we're putting out or mm-hmm. that we put out. Um, and yeah, it's, it's caused a lot of confusion and a lot of people have misunderstood it. A lot of people have understood it. A lot of people have questioned it. A lot of people have questioned me. Um, but it's it's been very interesting, you know. Um, obviously, not a lot has been, had, had been displayed right now at this time, but really... It's 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 a conversation. It's quite an interesting conversation. Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah. So so w- what's the thrust behind th- that image? Well, basically, um, the long and short of it is, growing up, I'd, uh, you know, I, I'd always looked up to Jesus as a superhero. Like Jesus was my favorite superhero. You know, um, with all the superheroes that I've been fed all my life, that was my favorite. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? He was my favorite because he was for the people. You know what I mean? He was very humble. He was very peaceful. Um, very just, very obedient. He was highly anointed. You know what I mean. He was very close to, to God. You know what I mean. Um, and and so growing up, he was like my favorite superhero. You know. Um, and with him being my favorite superhero, you know, with learning that you know the best way to get to heaven and to and to get to God is to be Christ-like and to be like Jesus Christ. You know. And so I've, I think ever since I was a kid, or ever since you would say, uh, ever since I was born again. You know, I, I was I went on that mission to try and be like Christ and to try and be Christ-like, and so what people are looking at is a metaphor of me wanting to be Christ-like. You know, me taking the idea and the image of what has been taught to me is Jesus Christ, and I've edited the image to add in a couple of things that I've experienced in my life that actually change or deviate or keep me from being or looking or like like that guy. You know what I'm saying? So you have the idea of what I'm trying to achieve in life, but then there's so many bad and evil things that come your way, like girls, like, you know, drugs, alcohol, you know, um, and everything that you go through, you know what I mean? And it's not just me just because I'm famous. Everyone, you know what I mean? Everybody is out there faces whatever different weaknesses. And so I painted, I was painting or creating an image of myself, metaphorically, as Jesus Christ, you know, on, on my mission to be like Jesus. I know I said that's long and short, but that's quite long. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's quite long, yeah. I, I, I get it, I get it. Because it was just so weird to me because I saw you drop the image on Instagram. I was like, okay, oh, cool. Yeah, that's funny. And I moved on. How'd <laughs> 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 I, I you so <laughs> twisty? You're like, that's funny. Double tap. <laughs> and then I, I was just scrolling through my Twitter. I'm like, why are people so, Oh, snap. People really are angry people right now, really son. Pissed, <laughs> people are really pissed, fam. People are really yeah, pissed. Yeah, wow. Yeah. Well, I guess there's no thing as bad publicity, I guess, huh? Uh, I don't know if it's bad publicity because I think it would be bad publicity if I if I gave in to the criticism. You know, um, mm-hmm. a lot of this criticism is is very much based on a different understanding. Like people thought I was putting up an image of Jesus. First of all, that's that's the first mistake. Was mm-hmm. they thought that that was I was saying, yo, this is your Jesus. You know what I'm saying? Uh, the second question is that people thought that I was making a mockery of the religion. You know what I'm saying? And and that to me is like a big mistake. You know, if if you're coming from that standpoint, even me myself. I think I would be pissed if someone was saying, yeah, this is what I think of Jesus. This is what I think he looks like. Or whatever, whatever. I'd be like, yo, fam, that's not right. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But no, that's not what we're doing. I'm not I'm not talking about Jesus. I'm talking about myself. You know, metaphorically, that's how I see myself. I see myself as a, as a child of God, like Jesus is, with a whole lot of flaws and a whole lot of, like, incorrect things in the picture yeah. that make a lot of people uncomfortable, you know? And... And I don't know why people are upset. I, I don't know whether people are upset at the fact that I'm saying, I, I'm, you know, I've always wanted to be like Christ, but I have so many flaws. Or if I'm saying, well, first of all, that's not Christ. <laughs> you know what I mean? That image is not, you know, white Jesus, like you said, white <laughs> yeah. Jesus. 
you know, I don't, I don't believe, you know, that none of the pictures that we have are the guy. You know what I'm saying? And I don't think none of us have a picture of the guy. First of all, you know, which is why I, I actually said to someone else, I said, if I, if I was playing with Mandela and I was saying I want to be like Mandela, oh, um, Reason Mandela, if, if that was the name of the song and not Reasons Christ, if it was Reason Mandela, and I had an image of Nelson Mandela there, you know, and I had a gun there in his hand, and I was saying no, then that I think that would be very very hectic because that would be an actualization you know but what i've taken is i've taken another idea of someone else of what this guy looks like and i've played and i've you know and i've created a new picture of myself so if that still offends people then i guess who i am is a is very offensive to people right i I know i get it anyway thanks for clearing that up it actually brings on to my next question because i used to wonder like are you a five percenter (laughs) because <laughs> you're showing our God body it was like what arm leg leg arm <laughs> head <laughs> all the way fam all the way all the way all the way I mean I just no I'm not I'm, I'm, the, I'm the guy this is it this is what you have this is in the flesh on, right. on the crucifix right now alright so where did God body come from it's it really is like uh, I, I, I believe that uh Apparently, you're born in the image and likeness of God. And so I believe that when you perform at your highest definition, which is why we have the HD, when you perform at the highest definition of yourself, you really are performing in your God body because then you're performing at 100% of your talents and 100% of your being and 100% of your mental capacity. So you are performing in your God body because that is 100%. That's exactly what he is. He's 100%, not a, not a five. Um, but... W- w- but with that being the theme, I think it stretches onto all these other conversations. But the reason why we go with the whole God body mentality is, you know, it, it really is about that. It's like you you you're supposedly made of the image and likeness of God, and so you shall operate as such. Uh, uh, yeah. So the 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 freestyle for Jesus Christ. Yes. You said it's now tied to that joint you did with Tweezy. It is tied to the joint that we did with Tweezy. Okay, so what's the plan behind those two joints? I mean, really, the theme behind creating an explosion around the song with Tweezy was the theme of the realist. You know what I mean? It was actually, it was based on, yo, if you really want to introduce this song and you want to be seen as the realist and you want to push the whole concept of the realist, you need to say some real shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You need to be real with the people about, you know, something. You know what I mean? And and so this is what I wanted to be real about. I wanted to be real about myself now as an artist, my experiences as an artist, my experiences as a human being. Um, so many different things have happened that a lot of people are going to discover on the freestyle. So many different, you know, threads that I don't touch on um, mm-hmm. or that we've missed since the album, you know. So, um, yeah, that's what that's really what the freestyle leads into. It's like a really, really real statement that's followed by a song that speaks about being the realist. All right. So yeah. basically you're done with Audio HD in terms of singles. No, no, not even. Not even. We're not done with Audio HD. This whole thing is part of a whole repackage exercise. So we're going to repackage the album. Right. Uh, with a couple of new songs including these ones that, you, that people are going to download um, a couple of collabs that we have with other people um, and we're re-releasing the album um, and, and, and no it's not a deluxe edition right? it, it really really is like a repackage like a, re- a new look of this exact same message you know with just with a few missing messages that I think I could have brought out and I just didn't you know uh, but it's it's really it's really, it's really leading towards that. You know, this freestyle is a part of that. The song that we're releasing is also a part of that. And there's also so many singles that we have on the album that we still want to release, you know what I mean? But it's just like right now, there's certain things that need to be addressed, you know? And then, <laughs> and then we can jump back into the album, you know? All right, so is that just going to be just a, a re-release or is it like a gold, gold special edition? Uh, no, 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 it's not a gold special edition. Obviously, the record label is going to really want to push it to get the yeah. gold special edition, yeah. um, especially because of where the numbers are sitting right now. Um, and everybody always tries to reach that thing. I'm not. I'm not really that excited about a plaque, you know. As much as I am excited about the new work, you know what I mean, and and the wave and the shape in which it's taken. You know what I'm saying? Um, it really, really, really is like a cool, a cool place to be for me, you know, artistically. Just like with the new songs and having too many new songs to put out and just deciding which ones can stay, which ones can go you know which t- which ones to let go which ones to save for the next record so it's 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 a thing but yeah right, we'll see right. we'll see where the gold comes or not i don't okay let's go, let's go let's go to the music yes. uh, especially audio hd yes from my standpoint audio hd was kind of like i've made it or i'm about to make it right. so i don't have to struggle anymore Right, life is good. <laughs> I'm a VIP. I'm popping <laughs> bottles. So you're trying to find, you're trying to find like 
how do I how do I how do I survive as a quote unquote A list rapper, Ooh. but still feed the fans who, who want those hot bars? Ooh. And trying to find that middle ground. Damn, that's it. That's it. Yo, he got the album. <laughs> he definitely <laughs> got the album. So that's that the, message the message you're trying to convey? That is definitely the message that I'm trying to convey. I mean, Audio HD was done uh, like about a year and a bit after, you know, the release of Audio 3D, which came with a lot of, you know, so-called a blow-up, I guess, if you want to yeah. call it that. It came up with, with the blow-up, and within the blow-up, there's a lot of waves and touch points that you go through and experiences that you have, you know? Mm-hmm. And we were feeding back on that idea of, you know, after we introduce you, or after I introduce myself with this Audio 3D album, I'd like to tell you more about myself as a human being after the Audio 3D album, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, but yes, you've got it spot on. That is exactly what this song is, what the album is about, yeah. In the, sci- in the songwriting process, rather, sorry. Um, yeah. you, is it difficult for you to try to find a middle ground where you're like, I still want to deliver the best bars possible, but I yeah. want to make the song as easy to listen to as possible for the average fan? It's, it's funny, actually. With this album, I think uh, it, it was the other way around. It's With this album, I found I was so attached to rapping and rapping, like really, really rapping and being hard on the bars that I was finding myself trying to actually like dumb it down, like say less, don't complicate the things, get to the point, blah, 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 blah. Mm-hmm. And that was really, really the mission is, is learning how to actually simplify my messages and actually get them to as many people as possible. Um, considering how people consume music now and what, what, what they've come to know as a hit or what they've come to know as a beautiful song, what they've come to know as a smash, what they've come to know as a classic, you know, taking into all of those things. I think this album was just the exercise of actually, okay, well, let's just present music, you know. Um, but you'll see, even with the new work that we're going to put and, re- and add onto this album, it really comes from that learning of actually, you know, um, you rap that's what you do very well you know reason but now you need to make songs where people can catch on to the rap easily you know as opposed to being ahead of everyone you know so we're presenting music that's a little i wouldn't say light-hearted or or, or dumbed down per se but i think it's a little more presentable in the scope of where and how people take music nowadays you know um i can't dumb, dumb it down i've tried i failed it's not gonna work uh, but what I can do is I know I know how to how to how to present myself commercially, um, and that's what I've learned. So I, I've learned how to present myself commercially to the public, and how I've learned how to teach people to consume my work. You know, uh, the same way everybody's had to do that. You know, if you look around, everybody's had to teach people how they consume it. You know, we all know that we consume, AKA like this. This is how he releases his music. This is how he presents it to us. And this is the work that he does. We all know how to consume KO. This is the music that he does. This is how he presents it. This is what he's about. And now we're about to go through that whole exercise with reason where it's like, okay, cool. This is this is the work. This is the caliber of work. These are the ideas that you expect. And these are the controversies that you can talk about or these are the straightforward messages that you can expect as well. I, I, like leading up to Audio HD, you're, you're dropping those freestyles for ba- almost a year. Yeah. Like every month. No doubt. No doubt. And then you cut it off and release the album. Yes. Now you seem to be back to releasing freestyles now. Is, is that the pattern we can expect going forward or was, was that just for hype for the, for the project? Uh, well, specifically right now, yes it is. I wanted to stick to the theme. I guess if I'm going to be repackaging an album and I'm going to be reintroducing this album I'd really like to maintain how we did it originally you know mm-hmm. uh, so the freestyles leading into the original music is definitely a cool theme uh, but this time the only twist is the music that people are going to be getting um, is not going to be freestyles you know it's uh, this is the only freestyle that you're going to get but the next release is probably going to be the music you know what I mean but you can see it as freestyles because it's all a batch of music that was made in the last five to six months you know right. what I mean with the same mentality and the same approach we had for the freestyles because um there's a there's a there's a nice interest around um, listening to to rap music like that. You know what I'm saying? Um, and also presenting rap music like that with a commercial aspect is also just as exciting. You know what I'm saying? When I look at um, this Yippie Kaye song that we're doing with Cooley and AKA, it's very unorthodox in the sense of you know where's the hook? What is the hook? How does the hook come in? Okay. Oh snap! That's the hook. You know what I'm saying? Oh snap! This is the beat. Oh snap! Is is that you know? A lot of it is very, very unconventional, but it's all in an excitement around playing with the rules and bending the rules a bit. You know what I'm saying? Um, and we're bending them more. Audio, audio high definition was really me getting to that pinnacle where I was like, okay, I've tried to to, to show people that I can make music, and now I just want to make it. 
I just want to make music. That's all I want to do. Go in, get Cooley, get AKA, let's make music. Get KO, get my friend Mr. Beef, let's make music. Get DJ Fresh, get this girl PK, let's make music. It really is, let's make music. You know what I mean? And let's give people a new idea. You know, so many new ideas have been presented to people. These are the new ones. Right, Wait, did you just give us an exclusive? Of what? New joint? Yes. Cooley, AKA? Yes. Dope. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a, yeah. Well, that is that is really the wave. Um, so the when is that planning on dropping? It's a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> as soon as that guy approves and signs off the papers <laughs> and the masters, then we're good. All right, all right. We're good. We're good. We're good. All right. Um, along with Audio HD, uh, there also came a lot of let's say mass media exposure. I mean, you're right. on TV on Rap Dads, and you spoke about it briefly on the Freedom of Fame remix. Yes. How has your life changed since before you on TV and after you on TV. <laughs> you should see this Reasons Christ freestyle. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's interesting, man. It's interesting. You know, just even from this whole release, there's new things that I've now learned, you know, in my in, that I've attached to my personal library, you know, about this industry and how uh, how things work. Um, it's 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 very it's very cutthroat. The more numbers that you acquire, basically, as you go, is the more conversations that you have. Mm-hmm. Like saying a statement on Twitter doesn't only get to ten thousand people; now it gets to a hundred thousand people. Yeah. And so you find that you know the increase of numbers behind you. There's an increase in explaining yourself to a lot of people because there's new people that you acquire as well. There's people who don't even listen to hip hop music. There's people who think that I'm just on rap dads because it's rap dads is a show, but they don't know that I'm an actual rapper. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> they just think, oh no, who is it? What rap dance? You know what I'm saying? And and, and that it in itself comes with its own pull. You know what I mean? There's people who will come to you and be like, ah, but you didn't have a seatbelt on your daughter in that episode. And other people will be like, ah, but why don't you, you know? But that has a lot to do with being exposed. And being exposed makes you somehow accountable to a lot of people. You become accountable. Everybody who's going to see this interview right now, I'm accountable to those people. I'm accountable to you. I'm accountable to him. I'm accountable to everyone. Uh, because I've, I've, I've given them the information of myself you know what i mean like you're not accountable to me because i know nothing about you you know but for all i know you hate rappers who wear shades indoors <laughs> you know what i'm saying and if you were to say that out loud you'd be accountable to me because that would affect me and my opinion of what i think of that you know mm-hmm. so that's the new thing that i've come to realize is like yo with, with the increase in numbers there's an increase in conversations because you you introduce new people who don't even belong to this uh, community or who are not a part of this community and by that I mean like a hip hop community people who are outside who are just random bystanders listening you know and they come across something I find my I'm, uh, I'm accountable to that you know there's a granny who's gonna see a picture of Jesus <laughs> with two with two bums on top of his shoulders my dad's gonna see it as well my daughter's gonna see it as well I'm accountable to all those people and I have to have that conversation alright 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 all right. were you going into that project were you, were you tentative about what reality TV has done to a lot of rappers especially overseas and how it's tarnished their image (laughs) very much so actually very 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 much so Um, I'm even seeing it myself to a point Um, I think you, you, one can never control how people consume something. The only control you have is how you present it, you know? Mm-hmm. And I remember the reason why we accepted this whole project and the reason why we accepted to be a part of this project was because it was around a time when um, I wanted to shoot a documentary, you know, mm-hmm. about about me outside of the music, you know what I mean? Like pretty much what brings you into the music. Um, and that was that was only because I felt that people didn't really understand where this stuff is coming from. Like, okay, we hear you wrote a song called Pop the Cheese Up, but where is this perspective coming from? We hear this no sleep song, but where is this perspective coming from? You know, we hear this two cup core thing, but where is it coming from? And I wanted to do a, do- a documentary around that just to help people get, get a bit of perspective of what keeps me going and what I'm about. And then Vuzu showed up and they wanted to pay me to do that. And I said, okay, cool. <laughs> let's do <laughs> Y'all want to <laughs> wanna give me money to show people how I live? All right, cool, let's be about it, you know? Um, my biggest concern was to present it, you know, more of more as a documentary you know than it is as a reality tv show because there's there's certain things that need to happen in a reality tv show that we couldn't make happen for example there's drama that a reality tv show needs and there was no drama we could create you know between me my e and tito i mean we get along you know and there's no way we can create drama that's that's fake you know what i'm saying so we get along and we meet in a place where 
we don't need drama it's dramatic for me to even be there and that's the gym it's dramatic for me to be at the gym have you seen tito as well tito's also <laughs> not supposed to be in the gym so we're not supposed to be in the gym but he's about that gym lifestyle he puts us in the gym and a lot of conversations happen you know mm-hmm. but there were so many aspects of what reality tv show and what gets it going and what a channel would have to see in order for it to be considered a reality tv show that people didn't get in this you know mm-hmm. Um, reality TV shows have real crazy things going on that we couldn't present so we presented it as as a documentary of rapping dads you know three black males who happen to be musicians and how they they raise kids you know Um, one is raising a son two are raising daughters you know and that's that that for me was was enough to say okay let's go for it if it was keeping up with the rap with the rappers of <laughs> Joburg or Josie rappers, that would have been something else. That would have been a big fat no no. All right, all right, yeah. all right. So next video is endurance. Next, well, the, that was the last video. Mm. It was endurance, mm. uh, but after endurance, we're probably gonna drop the realist, and then after the realist, we're gonna go with Ipikaye, which is right. the new cool year. Nah, dope. Look forward to those drinks. Look forward to those drinks. So. so on the line of the project you're working on, you're also a judge for the Sprite Uncontainable Contest. Yeah, You've been doing that for a few years now, right? Since it started, four years now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. How has that helped your career and, and, and what have you seen that you've, you've been able to learn from? Every time I do the Sprite Uncontainable, I get, a, I get a very, very good reminder of where I come from. You know what I mean? Because I get to meet the guys who, who just want the deal. I get to meet the guys who just want to get on. I get to meet the guys who... All they have is talent. They don't have that much information. They don't have much direction. They don't have um, that many contacts. They don't have a plan. They All they know is that they can rap, you know? And every time I have to judge those people, I always look at them with that reality in my head that, yo, this is this is where I was um, two years before I bumped into Tumi and we decided to make an album, you know? Um, that helps you know or helps you understand what you need to look for in an artist. Because at that point in time, it's like a lot of people can rap, but not a lot of people are going to be good artists. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And that's the most difficult part is to find a good artist, you know, because you, you, I've picked the best rapper of the lot in the past three years, and they haven't really taken that journey further than winning. You know what I'm saying? Because really for them, they were just rappers, and they just wanted to win a rap competition. In this particular situation, you find yourself in a place where you realize there's people who want to have careers and who want to have a living and who want to be successful rap artists just like myself and others you know and those are the type of guys that we're looking for now you know being a part of this competition has at least now taught me that i need to find those guys because the other guys are just entering a competition you need, you need to find someone who's going to win this get the media and run with it and, and and hopefully end up bringing their own demo to sony you know what i'm saying or bring up their own demo to freaking you know i don't know cash time wherever you know what i'm saying but we're looking for people who are on their way up and not people who are just like i can rap all right, all yeah. right. So that brings us to our last question. Um, especially over the last year, there's been a big debate over if South Africa needs to bring in international acts to sell tickets. Mm. Right now, uh, the Sprite Uncontainable is bringing them up deep as a headline act. How do you feel? And let's not forget, um, you actually had a complaint at the the last Channel O and X event. Yes. Uh, about how you're treated backstage. Yes. Um, what are your views on that, man? I think I think my views are my views are very simple. Um, booking an international artist to come and perform, I, I have no problems with that. Mm-hmm. I have no problems at all. Um, booking an international artist amongst local artists and not realizing um, the value of the local artist is is what I have a problem with. Only because there's an international artist. Yeah. So on the day, especially because I'm a part of the company that's actually doing like the bookings and so on and so forth. Um, if on the day any one of us from our team decided to not respect KO's wishes um, and that's based on what he asked us for what he wants us to do um, purely because there's another international in the room I would be disrespected you know what I'm saying that would be very very disrespectful that's number one I think the inequality is the problem you know what I mean making sure that there's a division a separation even on the day we're going to break that whole wall you know what I mean Mm -hmm. Um, this is an international artist who's coming to South Africa and he has to meet the South African artists because these South African artists are great South African artists Mm -hmm. and frankly they're probably bigger than them in South Africa right now as we speak Mm -hmm. you know Um, but we respect their value as internationals and as long as they respect our value as locals 
And so that's the thing is to take away that curtain. That's my biggest problem is people like to put up that curtain between the international and the local as if they are not all artists or they are not worthy, you know, to be in one room. Whereas it's, it's very... There's a lot of people who are probably going to end up coming to see the Mop Deep concert because there's Kale's name is there. Mm-hmm. They're going to want to see the Mop Deep concert because Reason is there. You know what I'm saying? So we treat them with the same respect. Um, the only reason why Sprite does it, though, and the reason why we support it is because they, their whole theme is around authenticity. You know, the authenticity of the dancers, the authenticity of the graffiti artists, the authenticity of the MCs. And so they like bringing back a throwback of authenticity, you know, to the crowd authentically in Soweto, you know what I mean? As opposed to taking it to the dome or taking it to somewhere fancy, we bring them to the authentic version of what South African um, perspectives is, which is Soweto, which is the hood. Mm -hmm. Um, And we put together the show there um, to celebrate authenticity. That's the only real reason. Um, But then we package it with current authenticity, which would be a reason and a KO and so on and so forth. But the main thing here is to is to not treat anybody lesser because someone else that you value as more important is in the room. I think that's the biggest problem that we need to deal with from the back end. All right. Yeah. No. Thanks, man. I appreciate that time. Respect. <laughs> Thanks for hooking up with us. We appreciate it, man. Thank you, family. All the best. Holler, holler. All right, dope. Yo, what up? It's your boy Reason. You are now tuned in to the African Hip Hop Blog. Jesus Christ has come. <laughs>